Good morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this the 3rd of December 2023. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and this time that we can gather together. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us to bless us. We give you thanks for the wonderful and great and mighty God that you are. So we commit our time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6 and 7. This is a, a reading about Isaiah's prophecy of the birth of Jesus. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Lord bless His word to us. Let us come before Him and worship Him.
gifts and offerings to him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are a good God. You are our Father who watches over us and takes care of us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've provided for us and bless us with. And so we want to give this offering, Lord, in appreciation of all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Bless us as we give to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. This Wednesday, we have our prayer meeting. Do join us at uh, 8.30. Our scripture reading today was uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 9. And there it talks about the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And this talks about Jesus. He's the light of the world. And he shines into the darkness of this world. Why darkness? Because this world does not acknowledge God. And therefore it lives in darkness. It lives in the shadow of death. Indeed, because death overshadows this whole world. Overshadows every living creature on this planet. So that everyone eventually dies. Nobody lives forever in this world. But in eternity in Christ, we have eternal life. Right? And only if we are the children of God can we inherit eternal life. So we see that uh, in 9 and verse 1, it says there, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee by the, of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. And indeed, uh, Jesus <coughs> ministered very often <coughs> in Galilee of the Gentiles. <coughs> right? And uh, Nazareth is part of the West Bank uh, that is under the Palestinian Authority. So is Bethlehem, right? So many of the places that Jesus uh, visited and ministered in are actually under Palestinian control. Right? The rest are uh, under the control of Israel, managed by Israel. But the main thing is that there will be no more gloom. Right? That means people are living in gloom, in darkness, in sadness. Right? There is uncertainty there is fear right when it's gloomy you know you you are not positive right? you you have no hope when you're gloomy right it, it is dim you are uncertain of what lies ahead you can't see very far when it's gloomy right and so when there is light when there's no more gloom it means that there is light there is certainty, there is brightness. You can see far ahead, you can have hope. So when there is no gloom, there is hope. Because you can see far. You can be certain of the future. And verse 2 is similar. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Right? The people in gloom, in, in uncertainty, in fear and anxiety have seen a great light. They've, they've seen a solution to their problems, to the gloom, the darkness that they've been in. The shadow of death is a certainty for all of us. We have to pass through death. Everyone born into this world has to leave this world. But if we belong to God, we have a new body, a new hope to be with God. And that is the only certainty that anyone who lives, who has ever lived, has. If we do not have the Son of God, we do not have life. That's what the Bible says. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. 
So thank God that the light has come. And it's not just a, a tiny light, but it is a great light, right? That shines on all who live. So that the shadow of death no longer dominates our life. You know, when you, when you don't have light, you know, nowadays, uh, even kampong, uh, with solar panel, they, they can have light at night, you know, LED lights. Huh? So nobody really needs to be in darkness. Not like in the past, uh, where, where maybe you only candle, or if you don't have candle, you only have wood to light a fire, and you cannot uh, light a fire the whole night. We take a lot of wood, take a lot of attention to keep the fire going. But nowadays, you know, uh, everybody has some kind of light. Well, most, uh, I'm sure there are still people in the deep jungles who don't have such lights, right? But a light has dawned. A light has begun to shine. And all who see that light, who receive that light, have eternal life and no longer are under the shadow of death. We are under the shadow of life, God's life. The life eternal that God's, God has promised. Right in uh, verse uh, 4 and 5, it talks about, right? Uh, well, in verse 3 also, it talks about dividing the, the plunder. You have enlarged the nation, increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. There is joy in the Lord. There is victory because it says here, as people rejoice at the harvest, harvest speaks of victory, isn't it? Speaks of supply and provision. Huh? You, you have triumph over nature, right? And the seed that you planted has grown and has multiplied. There is a harvest. There is hope for the future. <coughs> you have food for tomorrow. And for, you know, the next year even, you can keep it. You have hope. <coughs> Dividing the plunder means that you have triumphed over your enemy. You are no longer defeated. But you have defeated the enemy. Hence, there is the plunder. Huh? That, is, that is the, uh, the, the, pro, the belongings of the enemy. You cannot have plunder without defeating the enemy. Right? But when you defeat the enemy, you have plunder. So there is joy in victory. But in verse 5, Every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning to be fuel for the fire. Because there is victory, so all the equipment of war and terror and everything is destroyed. So that victory is prolonged. And in that sense almost guaranteed. If you don't have any weapons anymore, there cannot be any defeat. Only victory. And the means of that victory, the means of that joy, the means of light, that defeats the shadow of death comes from the sun. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is contrary to the way of the world, isn't it? When you talk about defeating an enemy, you defeat with warriors and soldiers. You defeat with adults, but God uses His Son. God uses a child to defeat the enemy, to defeat death, to bring light to the world. So God doesn't dictate and overwhelm in that sense that the world overwhelms. You know, people of this world can only think of 
greater power to defeat another power. Right? Power, greater power defeats a smaller, weaker power. This is the way of the world. Or numbers. Huh? More soldiers, more tanks, more rockets can defeat huh? another power. This is the way of the world. This is the thinking of the world. But not the thinking of heaven, not the thinking of God. So when we look at the Middle East and whatever conflicts there are, if we look at the wars that have happened, you know, America, the greatest power in the world, uh, with more rockets and destructive power and everything else, has been defeated so many times. They lost in Vietnam. They lost in Afghanistan. Uh, how many billions they poured into maybe even trillions they poured into Afghanistan and the, in the end after 10 years they had to withdraw oh of course they never call it a defeat it's just a strategic withdrawal <laughs> say face uh. <laughs> they could not defeat uh, the Taliban and so the way of the world is using power and so on but victory is never sure but be assured God's victory is guaranteed because He is God He's all powerful no one is greater than God so no one can defeat Him and it's interesting to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders the son represents the father that's why the government will be upon his shoulders. Right? He will rule on behalf of the Father. This is the, the way they operate. The Father decides the Son acts. That's how uh, heaven operates. And the government is on his shoulder. He carries, he bears the weight of rule and authority. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Right? That is in, in Revelation. Written on his garment, on his leg. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Riding a horse, a white horse. He reigns and rules all over creation. Over all that he has created. And those that do not submit, do not have life. They continue to live under the shadow of death and they are gripped by death forever. But look at his names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Uh, and there'll be no end to his government to peace. Uh, and David's throne he will reign with justice and righteousness. These are not the words of this world. Right? This world doesn't talk about righteousness. You know, when you talk about any war and triumph, there's no thought of righteousness. There's no thought of justice. In fact, there's very often injustice. Huh? To the victor goes all the spoils the plunder so the poor people who are defeated uh, lose everything and they lose everything every dictatorship abuses exploits the people that they reign over but God doesn't exploit us God blesses us he is a wonderful counsellor uh, he walks with us, He leads us, He guides us. He is a mighty God. He takes care of us. He gives us peace. Uh, so, unlike the powers of this world that defeats, there is no love. They only love themselves. <laughs> uh, that's why they go out to war and they defeat the, the enemy. Not because they love, 
but because they want to be victorious, they want to dominate and control. But God is a wonderful counsellor, a mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and He brings peace to those who submit to Him. This is not the peace of the sword. Uh, the world, this world thinks of the peace of the sword. And when you defeat your enemies, you will have peace. That's the worldly thinking. The thinking of unrighteousness. Right? You must defeat in order to have peace. But God requires that we submit to Him. When we submit, we will have peace. Because the Prince of Peace comes and reigns and rules in us. There's a civil war going on in Myanmar. Right, the military junta, the military government uh, is uh, losing the war, it seems. Uh, but we don't know because they have the resources, they have the aeroplanes and so on. But the, uh, the tribal armies have ganged together into a brotherhood. <laughs> right, and they are uh, attacking this military dictatorship that has done so much evil, killed so many people, destroyed many lives for the past uh, few decades that they have reigned and ruled. 60 years. Yeah, 60 years. Huh? So, but we thank God huh, for these uh, tribal armies and some of them are Christians. Huh? Some of these tribes are Christians. And so we hope they win, huh? defeat the military dictatorship. Jesus never fought a single battle. Yet he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the Prince of Peace. Right? The only battle he fought was against death. And he won over death. Rose from the dead and lives forevermore. You know, if you are victorious in this world, uh, you have to defeat and you have to keep fighting because your enemy may not stay defeated forever. Right? Uh, everybody tries to come out of defeat to beat the victor. Uh, so nothing remains forever. But thank God, no one can defeat heaven. <laughs> Impossible. Because no one can go to heaven. Uh, unless God allows them to. So there's no way to defeat heaven. And we are on the victory side when we belong to heaven, when we are a child of God. Uh, with Jesus, there is only celebration. There is light over darkness, over death. So we have freedom from fear, anxiety. We should have freedom from sickness, disease. Right? This is the victory that Jesus gives us. And the final verse or the final sentence says, The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The passion of God, the compassion of God, the love of God will accomplish this. It is personal to God. He will do it because it is in Him to be victorious. It is in Him to love us with an everlasting love. Unlike the love of this world, unlike the dictators, the governments of this world. The government of God is secure because it's in heaven. Can't, can't ever be defeated. And so God is secure. Unlike the, the governments of this world uh, that... Uh, institutes all kinds of laws in order to maintain its power. Thank God he is not weak, does not need to maintain his power because no one can touch him, no one can touch heaven. And if we belong to heaven, we are safe in his arms forever also. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you that you are the God of all light. There is no darkness in you. There is only light and life and hope in you. And so we pray, Lord, that your light will continually shine into our lives. When we are confronted by the evil that works of darkness in this world, may your light shine into us and give us your peace the Prince of Peace, release His peace into our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your great love, for your great power. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's come around the communion table. The Bible tells us that we need to judge ourselves so that God will not need to judge us. Because when God judges, He also has to sentence and condemn and we thank the lord that he, when we judge ourselves we only need to be disciplined we need to be trained only thank you god lord we come to this table bringing nothing of ourselves because all our works are like filthy rags but the works of jesus is glorious and so Lord we only come trusting only in the glorious work of Jesus on the cross we ask that you make us worthy to partake of this communion we can't do it Lord but you can make us worthy by your grace and your mercy so we come trusting only in you bless us Lord when we partake of this communion in Jesus name Jesus on the night was betrayed when he given thanks he broke the bread and said this is my body which is broken for you take and eat in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup when he given thanks he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sin drink ye all of it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat of the bread and you drink of the cup you proclaim the Lord's death Till he comes again father we ask that you bless these emblems to us lord release faith into our lives to receive healing for our bodies to receive forgiveness for the guilt of sin in our lives in jesus name we pray betrayed Jesus took bread when he given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you take and eat in remembrance of me let's remember our Lord together in the same way after supper he took the cup when he given thanks he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood pour out for the forgiveness of your sin drink you all of it in remembrance of me let's remember our Lord together Father, we thank you that we can be obedient to the command of Jesus to have this communion together. And we ask for you to bless us, Lord, because we have been obedient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for our time together today. We pray our blessing upon us as we go. We commit our brother Harry into your hands, Lord. Bless him with health and strength. We pray, Lord, that you would help him to recover, Lord, in his left side completely. We pray also, Lord, for our country, Malaysia. We pray your blessing upon this land, even in this month of Christmas, with a lot of celebration and festivities. We know, Lord, that most of it will be godless and without your presence. But yet we want to pray 
that people, Lord, would be brought to consider who Jesus is. And may many in this land of Malaysia find Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Bless our country, Malaysia. Bless us in this coming week, Father. We pray even for uh, our members who are not here today, that you be with them wherever they are and whatever we, they are doing. Thank you, Father. May your hand be upon all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.